or something like this. Uh, you have an ad on the back side, and that kind of subsidizes the cost of photocopies for the students on this side, making photocopy free, hence the name open copy. <laughs> uh, and the theme of this uh, TEDx conference is out of box awesomeness. And in entrepreneurship, often people associate uh, awesomeness, which is the idea. And you come across examples like Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, the iPad. It's the idea that fascinates people. But more often than not, yeah, when you're running your own startup, it's not just the idea. It's the journey you take from the idea I had in my head about pre photocopy for students to actually running a venture across 50 colleges. Now, if I was to break this journey into three phases of open copy, the first one would be uh, inspiration, it's the idea. Right? Now, you all heard the saying that necessity is the mother of invention. In case of photocopying, it's fairly obvious that as a student, and most of you would have faced this or still encounter this, doing five, six courses each semester, you end up photocopying about 500 to 1,000 sheets. And it's an expense you don't want to incur. You want to spend money on food, on clothes, on your mobile phone, never on your photocopying notes, right? Uh, and the interesting thing that kick started uh, the venture was uh, that my college organized this beat band competition. And there's usually a buzz whenever there's a competition on campus sponsored by some of the big names. And so everyone was coming up with their million dollar idea how to improve the mess food, uh, how to make transportation better, how to do that six sense thing. And this was our idea. And as soon as we stuck to the name, we kind of knew that we were certain uh, of doing this. Now, the first idea we had was, let's give free photocopy. We charge the advertisers two and a half rupees a page. We give a black and white ad to a bunch of four or five students. If you make about 15,000 rupees a month, that should suffice for our pocket money. Which takes me to the next phase of the idea, which is aspiration. I think over a course of one year, we would have participated in about eight, ten business plan competitions. It's a fairly standard thing that a lot of engineering colleges and these schools do. Uh, and going through that journey, you realize that it's not as simple as just saying you want to get free photocopy. The biggest criticism is you can give it to the photocopy operator, he can take the sheets, he can take the money and throw it out. Uh, the no legal contracts are behind the photocopy operator to do this. And the theoretical answer is you can audit, but in real life, you know, it's not going to work. The second basic criticism, I think that's a thought that comes to a lot of people's mind is it's sheer wastage of paper. Uh, and in order to discourage that, we have to think through a lot of things as to how can we limit the number of copies students get, eco-friendly paper that does not use for uh, eco-friendly ink, and all that uh, thought. And eventually the third question is, will an advertiser ever pay for this? Why would anyone want to pay three rupees a page when he can get a pamphlet for 30 pesos in black and white? Now we walk through all those details in one year. Uh, as the aspiration phase, and we started thinking big. And not just doing this in one college. I think by the end of it, our business plan was like, we can do 100 colleges, and we can charge the advertiser only 2 rupees, we'll give him a full color ad. And from doing 10,000 to 15,000 rupees a month, we made 10 lakhs to 15 lakh rupees a month. At 21, that sounds a huge amount. Some of our people at judges did believe us, they gave us some money. I think by the end of the year, we collected enough cash to essentially start a firm. That takes me to the third part, the perspiration phase, which is when you actually have to start. Now, at all these deep band competitions, you'll see similar phases. You'll see people presenting their idea over and over again, which is something what we did so that we get some extra cash during college. And the most common question is, do you start up? And the most common answer is yes, if somebody paid me for it. But in real life, nobody pays you to start up. You start up and somebody might just pay you. Right? Uh, and the perspiration phase. In India, unlike the US, the one part most people miss is that there's a huge social support system. There's our friends, there's our peers, there's our parents, relatives, all of whom are really concerned about you. As a kid, taking the classical approach, where do I actually want you to get a job? And so the hard part is convincing someone that maybe I want to do something on my own rather than take a regular track. And this one thing when you talk about an idea, a lot of people are excited. 
The other thing is when you start saying that, you know, I want to do this. Now, a lot of tea party discussions at homes would be centered around, so what are you doing these days? I'm like, I have this really cool thing called poker coffee. Like, that's great, but what do you plan to do after college? <laughs> right. But once you get that phase, and I think it takes a lot of convincing, but it's definitely worth the effort. Once you get past that phase, you're ready to go. But in India, you have to, and not just in India, actually, with any startup, you have to figure out what you, why your customers will use this, and why your channel partners will use this. Uh, photocopying as a business has been the same for the last 25 years. I think when you went to college, it still cost 50 paise, it's still black and white, and the vendor is the same. Even when your parents went to college, the vendor was the same, it was still black and white notes. It was probably 20-30% cheaper. The fundamental thing hasn't changed. And the, sometimes the photo of your operator also has a change, it's just age of the college. And convincing each of those operators about something as radical as this is a big step. But not just the operators, think about colleges. Um, in a classical businessman approach, you'd be like, I can do 100 colleges into once. It took me three months to convince the dean of my college. And this is a college I'm saying that talks about entrepreneurship a lot to say that I'm going to do this in the 10 shops that you have on campus. But once you get past that hurdle, you kind of figure out that some colleges will work in a certain way and get past that. What's the next challenge? The next challenge is actually getting someone to pay for the idea. In my case, that's the advertiser. And the added complexity was, a bunch of four guys, all 21, 22, going up to the advertiser, a fancy PowerPoint presentation, not like this much longer and like true engineers with an excel backup of why it is numerically cost effective <laughs> to do this <laughs> and you go in and you meet some of those people and they're like how old are you <laughs> and you have is my competitor doing this i think your competitor can't do this because it's not out there yet so i think it's it, it's a key learning when you start up to realize uh, what drives people Inherently, they're risk averse. They don't want to uh, venture out unless it's really exciting. You've got to take that step with them. A good example of this is, you'll see a lot of PSU sponsoring college fest. Normally, they don't have anything that appeals to their youth. But they just have a budget for it somewhere. Right? So, I think that's one of the key learnings. Now, moving forward, the other thing I want to say is this, perseverance. Uh, you have to follow on with clients months at an end, uh, going back to them again and again on the same concept, and they make tweets there, tweets there, they keep negotiating. And once you close the deal, you, you like to believe, or theoretically you like to believe you're done, and that's just half the job done. They haven't paid you yet. <laughs> right. And that too is a big challenge that some people just, just kind of miss out when they're thinking about their big idea. Somebody has to pay for it and somebody will have to collect that money. The third aspect is the team. Uh, it's very exciting to stay. I run a startup. You know, I, I'm a student and I do this. It's very cool. But guess what? Startups don't have money to pay people. And while it's exciting for a lot of people to think about startups, as a career option, sometimes they don't take it up. And the one thing that worked for us really well was uh, as a student. It's very close to students. A lot of students use the service. Came back, said, you know, this sounds exciting. Why don't we do this? And even till date, it's a completely student-run organization across all colleges. Right from running operations to doing sales, it's always run by students. And I can tell you, as a founder, the best part is it's all free. You don't have to pay students much. And the, the other thing that motivates people about startups, and I think this is very crucial, uh, is the culture. People like working in startups because it's exciting. And I'll give you a small example of how we used to do this. Uh, we, we started out of my basement. Four of us would do sales all day. And sales in which is sticky very hard. Think of that insurance guy on the other line you always cut off. He was that guy. You had to make too many cold calls. But at six, when all the clients would normally pack up, we would also pack up. And we would go out to my room, grab a few beers, and relax for like a couple of hours. And just the sense of excitement that people had when the parents start calling, the 
as to where are you? They're like, Mom, I'm in a meeting. He's probably watching a YouTube video drinking here. Yeah. <laughs> it motivated everyone to come to office every single day for those two months and slog it up. I think that's 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 the that's the aspect of startup that really excites people. Okay. Now the last one I want to talk about in perspiration is is setting checkpoints. You you had a lot of successful startups. You always had people like Steve Jobs who did Apple, went out of Apple, came back to Apple, and made it into a billion dollar firm. But there's so many stories that you don't hear about people who stuck with the idea while the idea was going over. And so it's always good to have checkpoints or targets for your startup. Never be married to your idea. It's my belief. Uh, again, to just take you through the journey of how we did this, uh, we started doing this somewhere, as I mentioned. And in August, I had an internship in Germany. And like all Indian parents, my parents are like, you, know, you should go for it. I'm like, we do this. If I get four advertisers, then I won't go. If I get three, I'll go. And I was supposed to go on 16th of August. On 30th of August, I signed a fourth advertiser. I went down to the German embassy, collected my visa, went down to the advertiser, signed a contract, and immediately cancelled my flight tickets. And at that time, it was an extremely hard decision because you see a lot of your peers doing that in a very classical sense. But I think if I was to reflect on it, it's one of the biggest, one of the best decisions that I made at that time, sticking on for those six months. Okay. But it's not always it, it's not always going to work out that way. What if you actually don't need a target? I think that's a hard part for a lot of people uh, to realize that when is the time that they should move on. Um, personally, for me, I had this. I had a job offer from campus at a and company. And I set a target for myself that if our firm was to be at X level, uh, we should do this. Otherwise, we should definitely be just a student or organization where it was functioning fine. And we didn't reach that target. And I decided to take up a job. So the most common criticism is you let go of your idea. When you have something exciting going on. The idea is exciting. How come you're not doing this? And I'm like, you had a target. Once you meet a target, you go ahead and do it. But even if you don't, you transition. And that's the aspect of, of perspiration that you don't want to miss out on. Now, this is not to discourage anyone uh, from starting up. I think I would like to conclude this by saying just that the journey from the idea is, 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 a, lot, is a lot more important than just the idea itself. You have to aspire to make it big. And not only that, you have to perspire to make it work uh, through a lot of hardships. And if you can do that, you get all the success. I said that you, most of you are in college. And you know, if I was to reflect back on this, the two years in college that I spent, Running a startup was arguably the best two years that I had in college. That's probably one of the best experiences you will have. So don't wait for that million dollar idea. Have an idea, start working on it, think whether you can make it big and get on it. Thank you.